And indeed, this is your election headquarters, Joy News on Morty TV. The Electoral Commission has described as very regrettable the decision by the NPP to engage in preemptive allegations and suspicions to unnecessarily heighten the public tensions ahead of the election. The New Patriotic Party on Tuesday alleged the pink sheet had been printed out without any serial numbers on them. But in a statement signed by Eric Kofi Jakwasu, Director of Communications at the EC, he urged political parties to desist from making unsubstantiated allegations about the electoral process and the work of the Commission, and the work the Commission is doing to deliver credible and transparent elections to the people of Ghana. The accusations come hours after the EC began the dispatch of the notice or poll for this year's presidential election, which is now three weeks away. The publication of the notice of poll, though executed for the parliamentary election, could not be printed for the presidential election because of legal challenges to the process. With those hurdles cleared, the EC says it has started the distribution of the notices. Joy News Maxwell Agbagba has been speaking to the EC's Deputy Communications Director, Yusuf Ayuba. The notice of proof for presidential is, is ready. We've um, started dispatching them to, to the region. So that for presidential is ready. Likewise, the parliamentary, which was ready a long time, and it's even been posted you know, around the constituencies. And then also we got an indication, or we heard, that you've started printing the presidential ballot papers. How true is that information also? Yeah, it's, it's true. We, we are currently, you know, um, the first process is to uh, print uh, notices of who. Since that is done, well, we've moved into the printing of uh, the ballot papers. So as I speak, the various printing houses are printing the, the ballot papers for the presidential elections. And we have all the political party representatives and the security agencies, the staff of election. That issue is, is, is very clear. We have all the pol political party symbols with us. If you register your political party, it means that you must bring your symbol. We have it. That particular issue of um, the abbreviation of the name NPP under their um, symbol does not exist in all the correspondence that we have with um, NPP as a political party. There was a suggestion that um, since it did not contain that, when we are printing the presidential notices of who we should uh, make sure that um, we include the abbreviation NPP under the symbol. So it is not that the Electoral Commission made a mistake. Um, it is the official position um, or the official symbol that the new Patriotic Party uses that we use in printing the parliamentary notices of who. But if you realize uh, most of the political parties have the abbreviation of their uh, name under their symbol. So they also suggested that um, in printing the presidential notices of who, we should put the, the abbreviation the NPP under the symbol and, and, and also when we start printing the ballots we should we should put it. So we've taken that in, in, in good faith and we've done it on the notice of who. So for um, all the parliamentary candidates um, in this country, for the NPP, they're not going to have that abbreviation NPP under the logo of the party? Yes, because that is what, you know, um, they have have as, as a symbol uh, and therefore as at the time we were printing the notices of poll for the parliamentary um, um, elections that was what was in existence. The EC has also been responding to issues raised about pink sheets that do not have serial numbers. It explained those sheets in question are not the original pink sheets instead reserved copies to replace those original ones that might be spoiled in the process. President Mahama has, however, condemned the persistent criticism of the Electoral Commission and urged the various political actors to give the Commission a chance. The President's remarks come on the back of persistent bashing of the EC with accusations of bias, addressing the executives of the Trade Union Congress at the Flagstaff House here in Accra. The President expressed a worry suggesting the critics could be setting the stage for the election result to be disputed. EC is getting ready to superintend these elections. I think that one of the concerns we have is the constant you know, discrediting of the EC. I mean, when you have a competition coming up and somebody is consistently discrediting the arbiter, 
then it sets the stage for disputing elections, you know, when they are taking place. And that's the concern I have, and I've continued to express it. Um, our EC has conducted six successful elections, and this is the seventh. They have their personnel, the same personnel are working there, you know, and I don't see what the reason is that we say the commission is biased, the commission is trying to rig the election in favor of somebody and all that kind of thing. Our electoral process has some of the best safeguards for transparency in any electoral process in the world. I wouldn't say in Africa, in the world, you know, and um, the election is won or lost at the polling station. And it gives us the opportunity to have our representatives at the polling station watching the whole process from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., watching the counting process. And the good thing about our electoral process is the results are declared at the polling station. No box is taken anywhere and counted. In some places, they take it to counting centers and go and count there. And when the count is done there, anything can happen to the results. But here, it's counted right in front of us. You see people around MPP, NDC, CPP, PPP, and all the P's, you know, standing around. And as the ballots are counted, you hear one, two, three, for, and they count along. And at the end of it, everybody has a pen, they're writing, and they're immediately taking their mobile phone and say, oh, uh, so, but so, 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 one in this polling station. That is, what, what other transparency can you get? In his first comments about the violence at the Nima residence of the presidential candidate of his main opponent in the election on Sunday, the president said it could not have been sanctioned by him. However, they said uh, they've drawn lessons from the avoidable clash. I believe that Labour has a very important role to play in ensuring that um, elections are transparent, free and fair. And I'll ask you to rise up to that occasion. This country belongs to you. It does not belong to us, the political leaders or politicians. And um, I believe that when we ratchet up the political rhetoric, I mean, you should feel free and confident to call us to order. Um, by my nature, I'm not a person who encourages violence, and I would never, never encourage violence. And so if any such thing would happen, it would not be uh, because I have provoked it. Uh, we'll try to um, avoid the flashpoints that create that kind of situation. Um, only last Saturday, we almost had you know, uh, a clash which would have been unfortunate. I mean, if any of those firearms had been fired and somebody had dropped there, it would have been a completely different situation. And so we must be preventive in our actions to ensure that these things don't happen. I think that the police at NEMA should have been better briefed, mm -hmm. knowing that this group was coming to pass through. And then we should have taken the appropriate safeguards so that there would have been no, you know, opportunity for... Uh, that to happen. And so we'll take a cue from what happened and make sure that it doesn't happen in the future. So on the EC and the electoral process, the deputy chief observer of the EU, Mark Stevens, uh, and that's the EU mission uh, observing the December elections, he's added his voice to call to allow the EC to do its work as the elections draw near. He, however, intimates the Electoral Commission must also endeavor to ensure a transparent and fair process satisfactorily to all parties. He spoke earlier on the AM show with John Yusuf's Mama V. Owusu-Abwaji. <laughs> You know, ele elections are, are, are a, a, a contest for power. And that, that's the, you know, the, if you speak to an academic, that's how they'll start to define elections. Uh, and, and people get very concerned about the winner takes all mentality sometimes uh, in an election. Not only as it relates to uh, the first past the post system, which, which Ghana has and which we, we have in the UK as well, but in winner takes all in the sense of a broader sense that once people come to power. So I know there's always, in, in many countries, one visits, there's a discussion about this. And, and uh, but as I say, I don't really want to sort of compare countries or, or comment on others yeah, at this stage. I understand. I think, I think you know, Ghana's got a, a, a history. In, in your introduction, you talked about this is the seventh election since the you know the rest of introduction of the multi-party system with two changes of power. I think Ghana's got a lot to be proud of. I, I think what it needs to do is, is is recognize what it's got to be proud of, keep building on it, keep strengthening it, and keep making it better and better. That's that's the important thing for Ghana, not to compare it to uh, elsewhere. Say that. At this point in the election, the same as you'd, you'd say anywhere, to be honest. You know, there needs to be a peace 
presidential election. The election authorities need to be allowed to do their job and get on with organizing it. Uh, and the political parties and the election commission needs to try and find a good constructive relationship. Uh, there needs to be patience once the process is underway and patience once the results process is underway. But at the same time, on the election authority's shoulders, there must be transparency. There, there must be confidence so the stakeholders feel confidence in it and then feel confidence in the result at the end and that the result is accepted whichever way it goes. That's the most important thing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I look at this in, in many countries. Once an election is over, the most important thing is that the, the day after the country moves on. Let's stay a while longer on election-related issues. And with some few days to Ghana's elections, some voters are determined to exercise their franchise and are leaving no stone unturned in their quest to exercise their civic duty. These people have begun a process to replace their missing voter ID card. Max Olagbagwa caught up with some voters who had lined up at the EC's office. It's some few days to Ghana's big day and already um, electorates are gearing up to exercise their franchise in the upcoming 2016 elections. A lot of them have come here to um, get a replacement of their voters' ID card to hear the presence of the Electoral Commission. They are in this queue waiting to get a replacement of what will give them that right to take part in this year's election. I have a couple of them here. Chief, can you tell me uh, your name and then where you are coming from and why you're here today? Uh, my name is Razak Said. Hmm. I came from Nima, Nima, and I'm here to come and replace my photo ID card because 2013, for I bear my photo ID card, my tra uh, traveling passport, everything. But this 2016 general election, I must cast my vote because it's my right hmm. and it's my power. Hmm. So and I need it. So that is why I'm here today to come and replace my photo ID card. Hmm. So what motivated you to come all the way from um, all the way from Nima to this place to, to get the voters ID card so you can take part in the election at all? Uh, because I, I believe I believe in Ghana hmm. and I know that with my photo ID card uh, with my ID card I can vote and that vote can can make everything possible hmm. in this country and this nation and to vote for the right person to move the country, this, country, this nation forward. So that is why I'm here today. Uh, although I lost my ID card, so it's 2016, you need to vote. So I want to replace my ID card so that I can have access to vote mm. and bring change to Ghana, because now Ghana is too hard for us with the young boys. So you need to change for a better Ghana. So that's why you're coming yeah. um, for your ID card to be replaced? Yes, sir. My name is Steven. I uh, lost my voter's ID card some time back. And because of the upcoming elections that I want to participate in, I'm coming for a replacement of my card. Mm. So, <laughs> is it an election or you just want to get an ID card just to do other things? Or it's purposely for this year's elections? I have other IDs that I use. Oh, yeah. But I'm doing this because of the elections. Mm. Yes. Because of this year's elections? Yes, yes. Not for any banking transaction? Mm. Mm. No. Mm. I already have my bank account, so I'm okay. Okay, so you heard from a cross session of um, the public here, those gathered here actually are the premises of the Electoral Commission. They are saying that they are here to get a replacement of their ID card so they can take part in this year's election. One man, as you rightly, you know, you heard him say, he says it is his right and he needs to take part in the election. The last man that I spoke to says he has other forms of IDs that he can use for his banking transaction because usually the notion is that people would just want to come for their IDs for transactions in the bank and other you know and other things but he says that he has all of those ids but he just wants to take pass in this year's um, elections reporting for join news maxwell Ababa. and today we bring you a peace message from the general overseer of solid rock chapel reverend dr christiana do tete who is asking her fellow pastors to stop giving prophecies that will endanger the peace of the country somebody said if you think peace is expensive. Try war. Ghana has been a home for refugees for many years. We cannot afford to become refugees if we refuse to learn from all that is happening around us. We are surrounded by French-speaking countries, and many of us cannot speak French. We only know one sentence of French. So you can imagine if somebody pushes us 
into war. Where do we run to? What happens to our children? What happens to the future of this great nation we call Ghana that we love so much? Political parties will come and go. Ghana remains Ghana. Let us therefore fight for the peace of this nation. We need peace during Christmas. We need peace during festivals. We need peace every day in our lives and in our homes so that this nation will be what God has ordained it to be. Don't allow any politician to push you into doing anything silly. If somebody tells you to go and do something that you feel is not doable, tell the person to send his son or her son to go and do it. To our pastors and prophets, whatever gift that God has given to you, you have to use wisdom. Because the other day I saw in the news that a man has butchered the grandmother because he was told that he, uh, he's, she is responsible for his glory. He has taken his glory. Instead of you tilting to one direction, why not just speak a language that will be favorable to all? If God has shown you that Mr. So-and-so is going to be the winner of the elections. To avoid confusions and all kinds of things, just speak the way God will address the issues. You're still here on News Desk on Journeys on Multi TV, your election headquarters. When we come back, we'll bring you that story on the state attorneys plus other stories. Stay with us.